Hey, welcome back. Uh, today I'm going to use the non-invasive mode and measure quick to show how to um, essentially do a maintenance or just a, check, a system check without having to put gauges um, on the system. You can get a pretty good idea of how the system is running just by using um, psychrometers and your uh, clamp, your line clamp probes here. So what I'm going to do is I'm in non-invasive mode here in measure quick. I'm just going to put my induct psychrometers here. About a hole drilled. Drilled in there. And the reason I've got it over here, not actually at the coil, is because you want the you want the air to get a chance to mix. And um, you don't want to be within line sight of the coil. So you get a little bit more accurate representation of the temperature being, you know, distant decent distance away from the coil itself otherwise it'll probably show a really high temperature split so I'm gonna go ahead and put my return psych in here again I like to put it in the actual plenum box because it could be a bit cooler in the indoor at the indoor um, register so um, so let's see here grab my probes so there you go and get these probes synced up, test those. All right. Another thing as well, I mean, I like to put my liquid line probe a little bit of distance away from where there could be cool air affecting it. It's not much, but there's a little bit of cool air coming out of this here seal, so. I'm going to put my suction line probe here in the suction. And this way you can get pretty much a lot of your, most of your, um, if you're doing a, like a maintenance, you can get most of your information literally at the air handler. You know, at the, basically by the time you go outside, um, if you're doing non-invasive, all you have to do is essentially just clean your coil, check your capacitor, and, um, you know, if you want, you can put your, uh, just the probes on there, uh, low loss probes, but other than that, you shouldn't have to do much at the outdoor unit while I'm doing it this way. So all you need really to program it to measure quick is your outdoor temperature, which is provides for you using this, um, basically uses dark sky, so that's pretty decent app, pretty accurate. 75 degree outdoor, so I'll just go outdoor measurements. Outdoor air temperature, enter in 75, continue. So as you can see, I've got a 50 degree suction line, which it's showing its ideal range because it's it's essentially using the return dry bulb as its as your your reference point, okay, as your starting point. So we know the evaporated coil on modern um, air conditioning units should be about 35 degrees below your return dry bulb so if you see here 37 so let's just say 40 50 60 70 1 2 so 72 to 37 so it's exactly basically 35 degrees below then we'll do superheat um, it's saying current value is 13 degrees, it's design target is 10 degrees superheat. So the way we calculate our superheat, as we know, we go down the, the, the um, I meant up from the uh, coil. So we'll count 13 degrees above the coil temperature. So it's, just, it's approximating our coil is 37. So if you add 13 to that, you're getting 15, you're getting 50 degrees. Um, so it's really pretty precise. I mean, I've definitely tested it before, put my, um, the um, probes on the outdoor unit, check the pressures, and it usually is pretty right, you know, dead on using that 30 degree, not 35 degree split. Also, 
as far as your liquid line temperature it's assuming the outdoor ambient the coil saturation temperature is about 20 degrees above outdoor ambient temperature so basically you put in 75 for our outdoor ambient now we've got 95 assumed coil temperature okay and our liquid line temperature is going to be basically our um, subcooling current value is 17 this is an assumption design target is 10 um, which I have to check I'm pretty sure it's 13 degrees on this but I'll double check on the outdoor unit but um, a lot of times the subcooling isn't as precise um, as far as just the assumed temperature so essentially that's how it's finding the subcooling it's basically subtracting 95 minus 18 which would take us to 77 the way it got to the 95 though is by adding 20 degrees to the outdoor ambient which I've got programmed 75 I know I hope this is making sense it's kind of hard to really make sense of it but that's pretty much the way the non-invasive um, algorithm works for measure quick it just uses um, the baseline which would be outdoor temperature for your uh, condensing saturation so it uses 75 plus 20 to assume a 95 degree condensing and then you subtract um, whatever your temperature of your liquid line would is basically would be your subcooling subtract 95 minus 18 and you'll get your 77 um, and that's how that works and then for the suction the low side it's kind of similar it uses indoor dry bulb as the baseline it subtracts 35 to get you to so if you got 72 indoor dry bulb you subtract 35 from that you get 37 and then in order to get to your superheat you will subtract I mean you'll add um, 13 degrees well whatever the suction line is whatever suction line temperature that gives your superheat so essentially suction line is 50 meaning that right now the saturating temperature in the coil is being assumed to be 36 degrees based off it being 35 degrees below return temperature um, so the amount of super heat picked up meaning the amount of actual measurable heat being, it being picked up is measured at this suction line here this clamp is measuring that so by the time it gets by the time it picks up this, um, heat from the air being put over the coil it's 50 degrees the refrigerant's 50 degrees it's no longer 36 degrees so that's how you get the, the current value 13 degrees superheat so I mean that's pretty much it it's, it's a pretty decent feature it, it gives you in the ballpark let me know the system is running um, well I mean it'll show you if your system has got airflow issues if it's got overcharge undercharge potential you know restrictions uh, dirty condenser coil you know you're, you'd imagine your liquid line would be a lot um, higher so it could it could definitely give you clues and then once you get a, a clue that something's not performing well that's when you put your actual gauges on there and um, you know you can investigate a little bit further but 
I like using this just as my first line when I'm doing all my checks in here, checking my amp draws and you know static pressures. I like using this just to know what I'm getting uh, beginning into by the time I get to the outdoor unit. So essentially, this is just a quick video on how to use the non-invasive mode of measure quick. It's a really decent feature. I like it a lot. It saves a lot of time. And um, yeah, let me know what you think. Let me know if uh, it's something that you use as well. And like I said, we'll see you on the next one. Thanks. Bye now.